Good morning. <laughs> Man, we love that countdown, don't we? Yeah, let's blast off to Jesus, huh? <laughs> Rock it up to him and worship him today. Uh, good morning and welcome, everybody. Good to see your faces. Uh, we haven't got that rain yet, but I could use a little bit on my yard, I think. But, uh, but, but glad to see you here. Uh, today we'll go over a few announcements. Uh, today, uh, Thursday, uh, is VBS uh, starts, and it goes from 6 to 8, 30 p.m. To, uh, this evening. Uh, if you want to help, and I'm sure there's always something to do, see Kyle, Pam, or Debbie uh, for ways that you can help. Maybe not all week, but just at different times even. Uh, see if there's any needs. I know I'm pretty good at being a gopher anymore, going for this and going for that. So, yeah, there's always something somebody can do. Um, and then uh, Saturday, uh, we are invited to uh, Linda Gerson's uh, birthday party that the family is uh, throwing, and that's at uh, 1, 1 p.m. in Pittman Hall. So uh, you're all invited, and let's go celebrate her birthday if we can. Oh, there's also a meal provided, so food. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll read that then. It says party time. Um. Uh, yeah, 1 p.m., First Baptist Church, uh, and then lunch will be served uh, at that. Uh, and if you want to uh, let them know that you're coming, uh, there's a phone number, um, and that uh, I'll have that up here, uh, so we can grab that if you don't have Linda's phone number. Okay? Uh, Sunday, uh, bring your lawn chairs. Because uh, we're going to have a worship in the park over here at the west, uh, at the on the square, and that that'll uh, it'll be a good time to uh, celebrate the Lord outdoors. It seems like it always turns out pretty good, uh, no matter how hot or if it's going to rain. It seems like the Lord has blessed us almost every time, and uh, so uh, uh, be there for that. We will have Sunday school here at the church. So we'll come to Sunday school at 9, and then we'll head over with our lawn chairs over to the park and celebrate. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? Uh, we are nearing the finishing line at, on the basement remodel, and uh, soon we'll be creating a, 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 a Amazon wish list, and that's for the furnishings and other items that uh, we'd like to put in. Uh, there's still some construction odds and ends that uh, need to be done, uh, so see our trustees uh, if you can help. And I, is there still a list on the in the back there of things that need to be done? Yeah, uh, uh, back by the in the foyer, there's a list uh, of things that we can do, or you might look at it and say, "Hey, I can do that," and then pop in and get it done. Uh, Oh, back to Mac, yeah. Uh, where's that at? Okay, it's on the screen. Uh, back to Mac, uh, 9 to 11 uh, at the KC Hall. Uh, there's, we've still got backpacks, but we may still might need some more. So um, if uh, there, uh, the uh, uh, Alicia Hawkins, if you can help uh, with either supplies or donations. And... If you can and got the money, it wouldn't hurt to give it to her now, and we'll have it for next year, right? Yeah. Um, a happy birthday on Friday to uh, Debbie Clucky. Uh, happy birthday on Saturday to uh, Camden Blake. Any other birthdays or anniversaries not mentioned? All right. This statement by Brother Lawrence, the greater perfection a soul aspires after, the more dependent it is upon divine grace. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we come to you to worship, um, may our hearts be open to you. Um, may your love envelop us um, and, and guide us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. Uh, may we lift you up and... Uh, for we know that you are at the right hand of, of, of God and that you are there for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand and sing hymn number 667, Jesus Saves. <laughs>
seated at this time. And at this time, we have a special uh, music, and we have a guest, and uh, Pastor Dave's going to come up to and introduce it. I got the privilege today to have Judy Fulton come with me, and uh, she goes to our church and plays and does all kinds of stuff here at the church, but I stole her away today. And during my ordination, um, she played a medley of songs, and I just loved it. And so she, there's no reason for it to go to waste. And so I said, you got to keep playing some of that. And uh, so I'm not sure how many songs are in this list, but let's see if you can count how many, and, and she'll go over afterwards um, which ones are on there.
Thank you, Judy. That was fantastic. Yes. And is that right? Yeah. yeah. And folks, you cannot get that on CD for 1995. You have to be here and to hear it. Thank you. I didn't know, uh, you know, Dave brags on us quite a bit and builds us up, but boy, I, I, you know, there's talent there in Ashland, I guess, huh? <laughs> it comes from that. Thanks again. At this time, I think we'll, um, kids, did you enjoy that? Yeah. Are you ready to go downstairs now? Okay. Let's go downstairs um, with Miss Linda. And, uh, for, and as they're preparing for that, if our ushers will prepare for uh, our offering today. time. 
Pastor Dave will come up. Good morning. Everybody good and glad to be here this morning? All right, that's what I want to hear. All right, praises and prayer requests, definitely. And what do we got going on this evening? Let us pray for that, okay, that we have a a good attendance and uh, that we have a good outreach and also that uh, we can touch somebody's life in a very special way. That's the whole reason for it. Other praises, prayer requests. And your birthday party, yep. So we have a dedication for Lila coming up in August the 7th. So I'm excited about that. And uh, I have not dedicated a baby yet. And so I'm going to make a big deal out of it. I'm sorry. It's this way it's going to be. So I'm excited about it. And uh, so they'll probably think I'm nuts, but I am. I'm going to dedicate the whole service to it. So, all right. So pray for that. Um, Starting on August, uh, the first Sunday in August, um, I'm going to start, uh, do things a little different in Sunday school, and I'm going to start a little different class, I'm going to call it. Well, just to tell you, I was pulled out here and came to the stop sign, and I looked over there on that building, and right there says Route 66. Um, I don't know how long it's been there, and I thought, you know, there's 66 books in the Bible, so we're just going to start kind of a Route 66 uh, thing. I'm going to pick something out of uh, just going through. Uh, if So if you like Bible uh, stories, you like how it applies to your life, that's what it's going to be about, all right? And uh, it's going to be fun, interactive, and uh, so, and it's just a great time now when we get together and everything. We all talk and talk about, you know, it's one thing for me to stand up here and talk and preach because we really don't interact too much. And uh, But there in Sunday school, we can talk and discuss and see how it applies to our daily lives. So um, please plan on being there. I think it would be fun if you're not coming to Sunday school. Uh, I tell you what, as Sunday school goes, so does the church. And it grows that way. And so as our Sunday school will grow, our church will also grow with it. I just think that's a major part of it. I love it. So and that will start on the 1st of August. And uh, anything else so that we need to talk about? Yep. Oh, wow. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Good. Yep. Well, Judy, my sermon is almost a perfect 10. And that is just about as close to a 10 as it comes to, as far as I'm concerned. How many songs are in that list? Do you remember? Anybody count to see how many you come up with? 12? Is that how many? There's 12 of them? Yeah. Where's the sheet music for all that? I didn't see her. She did it all by memory. It's just amazing. And uh, thank you, Judy. And uh, it's just totally awesome. And uh, a, a tear come to my eye. I can't help it. I don't know if that happens to anybody else, but those are just songs I love. So any other requests or praises? All right, but let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day and thank you for all the things you do in our lives. I pray, Lord, that you've heard our request and uh, the things that uh, we would bring to you and ask that you help us with. I pray, Lord, that you touch each and every one of us, touch those who are sick and ill, touch those who are struggling with uh, various different problems, hurts in the family, and uh, unanswered questions that we uh, uh, need to, to close uh, things that are going on. And we just pray, Lord, that you uh, give healing in all of that and that you touch our lives in a very special way. We thank you for always being there, and we thank you for always being a part of our lives. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Well, good morning again. And uh, it's really good to see you. I, I uh, 
Uh, we missed you last week. I talked about you. I'm going to talk about you again today. All right. So, but uh, he's got my back back there. So, um, almost. <laughs> <laughs> I just now looked at what they had up there. Almost a perfect 10. I love it. I never know what they're going to put on the screen, and uh, so, but uh, I like it. So, um, almost a perfect 10. You remember when the movie came out, 10? And who was starred in it? Bo Derek. And I remember the opening scene. Here she is running along the sand right there along on the beach and everything, and and uh, she's got all her hair braided and, and everything, and it's flowing in the wind as she's running in slow motion. And she's, you know, uh, supposed to be the perfect 10, right? Well, my brother, Bob, my middle brother, he bought into it, and he had a poster of Bo Derek in the bedroom, all right? He had a poster there. Now, my little brother, he thought his perfect 10 was Farrah Fawcett, yep, and so then... <clears throat> Now, I was always into music, and so I kind of liked Linda Ronstadt, but I didn't have a poster of her, but I always thought she was pretty cute. And then, so I was talking to Steve about this, kind of giving some ideas and everything, and I said, and he says, just real quiet, like he says, I had a poster. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, and maybe he had, you know, Bridget Bardo or somebody, you know, and I'm thinking, all right, and he says, it was Pete Rose. And I thought, man, you talk about going a whole different direction for me. And I thought, wow, you know, that's not what I expected. And uh, so, but when I think about it, and probably if you think about it, there's probably a lot more um, people up there that play sports in bedrooms and musician band pictures and stuff like that. And so that just makes sense to me. And so today I'm going to talk to you about someone who was almost a perfect 10. And matter of fact, he was really good at what he did, okay? Really good. But before I tell you who he was, I want to go back a little bit. I want to give you some story because I love how these stories connect and how it's just one long, big prediction or however you want to say it. You know, God gives us all just story after story after story. If you don't I mean, they're the best stories in the world. I just love them. And they come together and they come alive for me. So what happened was, you remember Naomi in the Bible? Remember her husband died and then both of her sons died. And so her daughter-in-laws, one was Ruth and the other one's name was Orpah. All right? And so there was a famine and there were some problems going on. So... Naomi decides she's going to go back to Jerusalem. Remember this story? And so then <clears throat> Naomi tells Ruth and Orpah, she says, you know, you guys, you really don't need to go with me. I don't know. There's probably not much of an opportunity for you to find new uh, husbands and uh, have kids or anything like that. So you just need to go back to where you came from, your own gods, and serve them. Well, Ruth said, I'm not going to do it. I'm staying with you. But Orpah decided to leave, and she went back to Moab and uh, to her own people and ended up in a city called Gob, okay? Orpah wasn't treated very well. Matter of fact, she was treated horribly when she got back. And <clears throat> she was given to a man whose name was... Rafa, and uh, you can't find this in the Bible. It's actually in Jewish history. It's in the Chronicles, Jewish Chronicles of, of different people and how it happened. And matter of fact, I want to be real clear about uh, history. When you read Jewish history or any kind of history, if it does not go along with the Bible, just listen to what the Bible has to say. All right, period. So a lot of times it fills in the blanks and it kind of gives you an idea of what all was going on, but if it contradicts what God has said here in his, his book, then I don't pay any attention to it. So, but Orpah goes back and she is uh, given to this man called Ralpha. She has four sons. One's name is Sham. The other one's name is 
Lima. Another one's name was Isha Banami. And then the fourth son's name was Goliath. So Goliath is a person I'm going to start with here. He was nine foot six inches tall. That's almost a perfect ten, wouldn't you say? As far as giants go. I know, you guys think I'm nuts, nuts, don't you? I come up with some of this stuff. Yeah, I know, huh? That was a kind of a nervous laugh, so I know she's agreeing that, the, yeah, he, he's probably nuts. Nine foot six inches tall, he was a giant, and Orpah married a giant, okay? Rapha was a giant, and it tells you that in the Bible, and he was the giant of Nah, a gob, sorry. And so, <clears throat> we learn that as a boy, David comes on the scene and what happens? He defeats Goliath, right? The thing that amazes me, it says he picked up five stones, smooth stones. And Steve, why do you think they were smooth? What if it was all jagged and everything? What if a baseball was all jagged and they went to throw it? it who knows where it would go, right? He was a pretty smart dude. He gets five smooth stones because he has five brothers as far as Goliath goes. He has four brothers, I'm sorry. There was five of them all together. One of them we don't know the name of, and it was only a half-brother, so Orpah doesn't have but four sons. All right, so David, the thing that really amazed me here, it says that David picked up those stones, and he took off at a dead run. The Goliath. I want you to think about that. He was 100% committed. There was no turning back at that point. He took off, and he was either going to defeat his giant, or he was going to die. That's only the, the only two outcomes there could have been. He was that committed to what he was going to do. He took off at a dead run and at a dead run through that rock with that sling. Just amazing. He was totally committed. And last week I talked about Esther, remember? Esther says, when she had to go to the king, she says, I'll either perish or I won't. How committed are we to our Christian lives? Really? How committed? I don't know if I'm that committed that, you know, if it was either life or death, you know, would I run at it? I'm not sure. You'd like to think, yeah, but realistically, standing up here, it isn't a human part of me, and I have to say, I don't know. And maybe there's several of us that wouldn't know. But the, here's the thing we got to do is we got to try. We got to learn. We got to figure out the best path and the best way to, to, to live our lives. You know, after Goliath, the giants still came. There were still giants in the land, remember? David, as a boy, defeated Goliath. He defeated that giant. But they didn't stop there, they kept coming. And they always led the Philistines and the army, and they had to go fight them. Wouldn't it be nice if we only had to face one giant in life? You had one obstacle to get over, and once you got over it, that was it. That's free sailing. But that's not the way it usually happens, is it? Our giants keep coming, and they keep coming towards us. And we have to be ready for it. For David, they kept coming as a boy and as a king. And you know what? Giants are huge, and they're mean. David was still in battle. He was still fighting a good fight, and it was still a fight to the finish. Wow. Let there be light. All right, that's cool. Just kind of like with that laser thing the other day. You know, it just decided to work and then decided not to. How committed are we in our lives in fighting our giants? 
But Satan and the powers and his powers, guess what? We, we can't defeat them by ourselves. And they keep coming. There's no rules when it comes to fighting giants. And there's no rules when it comes to fighting Satan. He plays any way he can to win. He's a street fighter. It doesn't matter. There's no rules. The only thing that matters is winning. And that's what we face. Now, three of the four giants have died, either by David's hands or by his army. And so there's one left over. His name was Ishbi Benab. That was uh, one of his brothers that I was told you about earlier. And so <clears throat> I want to read, um, well, I'm going to wait here just a second. In 1 Peter 5, 8, let me uh, read that. It says, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You believe that? I do. I believe it. He's a very opportunistic person. And he's always looking. And so in 2 Samuel 21, 15 through 17, I want to read this to you. Because we got one giant left. And it says, once again, there was a battle between the Philistines and Israel. David went down with his men to fight against the Philistines, and he became exhausted. And Ishbenob, one of the descendants of Rapha, whose bronze spearhead, spearhead weighed 300 shekels, that's about eight pounds, about what a gallon of water would, would weigh, and he was armed with a new sword. And he said that he would kill David. But Abishai, son of Zariah, came to David's rescue. He struck the Philistine down and killed him. What I got from this is here we had one giant. David had one giant left. They'd killed all the rest of them. Maybe we're dealing with one giant in our lives right now. Maybe it's a huge giant. And one of the things about giants is they're deadly. They really can hurt our Christian lives. It can actually destroy our Christian lives if we're not careful in some things. <clears throat> so this giant, and I'll just call him Benob just for short, he saw an opportunity. David was exhausted. He was tired. He was wore out. He couldn't go on any further hardly. And guess who saw him? Guess who noticed? The giant. So when you're tired and you're wore out and you don't feel like messing around or doing anything, guess who is watching? When you've been doing vacation Bible school all week long, you're tired and tired of kids. Guess who's watching? He's looking for that opportunity where he can step in and cause some kind of trouble. And so here we have it. He's watching and he sees it. He's fresh. It says he had a brand new sword. And he intended to kill David. He had a brand new sword, which means he hadn't been in battle and hadn't been dulled. Uh, while he was fighting, it was sharp and it was ready. And he saw David was down. And he was ready to kick him and just to finish him off. When we get tired as Christians and we get just run down, Satan can tell. When you have a, a, something that's going on in your life and you get weak. And we all get weak as Christians. We get weak as people, as individuals. But don't think somebody's not watching for an opportunity. I brag all the time about this church. I love this church. This is a great church. And it's a busy church, and it's a church is alive. And we have kids coming here all the time. On Wednesday nights, we have all these kids that are here. And we have a really good ministry. Things are going pretty good for us as a church, really. Which means we need to really watch when we're tired and when we've been doing a lot of things. 
because somebody's waiting for an opportunity to cause this church some trouble. And we really need to pray about that and pray that God will give us the strength. Something else about giants. You really shouldn't fight them alone. You really shouldn't try to fight them alone. If you're going through something in your life and you're facing a giant, don't try to do it by yourself. Try letting us come in. Depend on the people here at the church to pray for you, to lift you up whenever you're tired. And it may be somebody you don't even think would do it. Abishai was the one that came and saved David from the giant. Earlier in the chapter, it says that they didn't get along. It said that this guy frustrated David. And if you look back and find out why, as after Absalom had died, and what to do with uh, Saul's sons and things like that. And anyway, David really got after him. He said, he just frustrates me. And then to find out in his time of need, when he's down and he's weak, and the giant is approaching Guess who saves his life? There may be times we don't see eye to eye during meetings or whatever, but we're all on the same page, or should be, and we're all facing the same goal, right? We're all on the same side. We don't face our giants alone. We need other people. We need people to pray for us. And by the way, Just to finish out the story for Orpah, she knew that her son had gone down into battle and was going to kill David. That was his intent. It says that she ran out onto the battlefield to try to persuade him to come back and not to face David and his army. Well, as you see, her son died, but so did she next to him. He was killed also. These stories, you can't make this stuff up. It just, it's like something you would buy off of, a, you know, off, out of the store somewhere or somewhere like that. But they're great stories and they're true. And things that we can add to our life and use in our life. We need each other. We need each other to guide, to pray for us, and to move us along. One of the things I really want to say is we really, really can't fight giants alone. We need each other, and we need each other at this church. The other thing is that David knew that the Israelites would never have peace until all the giants were gone. It says that he knew that Israel would never be at peace while there were giants in their lands. You'll never have peace in your lives until your giants are gone. You'll never have peace because some of those giants are what we call sin. And you can't just deal with one of them. David couldn't just deal with one and say, all right, that's, that's good enough. had to deal with all of them. And you can't just deal with one sin in your life. You have to deal with it all. So David had to get rid of the giants. And the only way we can get rid of them is through Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can deal with the sin in our lives and save us forever and give us peace. So if our musicians will come forward, if you have a decision you'd like to make, please come forward as we sing. And we're going to sing number 96, I believe. Let's stand.
Thanks for being here today, and uh, it's really good to see all your smiling faces and putting up with me. Is there any announcements or anything we need to make? Anything that uh, last minute things we need to talk about for Bible school? All right. Great. All right, then let's be dismissed and with a word of prayer. Our Father, and then we thank you again for this day and everything that you do in our lives. Please be with us. Please help us as we face the giants in our life and the things that are just hard for us to get over. I pray, Lord, for guidance. I pray, Lord, for peace. And I, I just thank you for your love and your kindness and the strength that you give us. Keep us all safe and well as we go and uh, just be with us during Vacation Bible School that we will touch somebody's life in a very special way and give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you, everyone.